decision guide. We're in the book of Proverbs, only using one verse today, uh, chapter 19, uh, 16 rather, verse 9. 16 and 9. And uh, we want to begin with a question, talking about a questionnaire. Well, I want to begin with a question this morning on this topic of decisions. Well, you know, uh, here we are at the first of the year, right? And a lot of things we think about, well, the preacher's going to bring a message about commitment and this and the other. Well, actually, I'm not this morning and uh, in, in preaching, but I'm going to share some thoughts with you. And a little bit later on, we'll be getting into a, a more of a study of, of a particular subject or topic. But I want to deal with this subject of dis decisions today because your decisions are very important. And it's very important that you make the right decisions on the right, at the right time. So here's your question today. Are you tired are you tired, and I don't mean from working, but are you tired or, uh, from, or are you tired of making bad choices and would you like to start making good ones? You know, you think about it, you say, well, preacher, um, you, every one of you, including me, we've all made bad choices, haven't we? But thank God, I hope <laughs> we've learned from those choices. Some of us are kind of like a mule standing between two bales of hay and unable to decide which one to eat from and afraid to make, of making the wrong choice. Well, you know what the end result is? You starve to death. Exactly. So uh, you, are you calling us mules? No, I didn't say that. It's just a little story to get your attention today. Sometimes you are a little mule-headed. We all are, aren't we? Yeah, preacher. Amen. Amen. Someone asked Abraham Lincoln if he was sure that God was on his side. And Lincoln replied, I, I, have, I haven't thought much about it. I just want to know I'm on God's side. And, you know, really, that's where we need to be today. Decisions can n really be nerve wracking at times in our lives, and they can even become very stressful. You know, I've heard the saying, I used to hear people say, well, that person is very indecisive, and they choose not to decide. No, there are no indecisive people on earth because you decided not to decide. So, see, either way, you made a decision. You got to learn to start making good decisions. There are several biblical principles today that, that you can do to reduce. We all need stress levels reduced in our life, don't we? We really do. And here's several of them today that can help you. First, today, you've got to do the research. You've got to do the research. Psalm 119 and verse 98 says, Though uh, through thy commandments, though thy commandments have has made me wiser than mine enemies. So understand, when you are in God's word and you are seeking God's counsel, you're going to make wiser decisions. And you know what's neat about that? James said, if you lack wisdom, ask of God and he'll give it to you. That's one reason we're doing and trying to encourage you to get in the Bible through this year and read through the entirety of the Bible. Because what that's going to do, that's going to give you a better wisdom of God's word that you can apply to your daily life that will bring about better results. So you don't have to look back in next year, if, we, if the Lord spares us this year, you don't have to look back and say, I sure hope, you know, 2020 will be better than 2019. No, your year can be good. But you've got to make a decision to do it God's way. Amen. So get all the facts and avoid making decisions that you're going to regret. The second point is, not only do the research, but ask or talk to God. Psalm 25 and 4 says, Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Now, consulting God helps to avoid premature decisions, that, and it gives you clarity in your priorities and it prepares you to hear God's counsel so you know if you exclude God from your decision making process I think I can probably say most of your decisions are going to be bad and they're going to bring bad results and all you ever going to be doing in life is catching up from the bad decisions that you've made so you know I'm glad you can talk to God he said call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not that means that God wants to hear from you. God wants to help you. God wants you blessed. But he can't bless you if you don't talk to him. And third, you've got to be open to new ideas. 
If you got this old mentality, well, I've always done it this way and this is the way I'll always do it. You know what? You on a dead end street. And to put it in bad English, it ain't going to work. You've got to be open to new ideas. Psalm 18 and 15 says, The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. So don't get trapped in old mindsets. I always am trying to look to do things better. And you know, you've got to be open to new ideas. You, too many times we cling to the familiar, and there's nothing wrong with some of the familiar things that we do and some of the traditions that we've got. But sometimes clinging to the familiar will become crippling to you. And God may choose to lead you on a new path of fresh insights. You've got to be open to let God lead you. You can't live in the 50s, the 40s, the 30s, or the 60s, or the 70s, or the 80s, or the 90s, or even what happened yesterday. You've got to learn to let God bring about new ideas and new things in your life. And thank the Lord, we can, we can involve those things. Remember, God alone controls the future. You just need to trust him. He'll never fail you, will he? Amen. So if you're tired of making bad decisions, any of you ever made a bad decision in life? Say amen. amen. Ah, now I think I got the right audience. Yeah. But would you like to start making good decisions? Say amen to that. Sure you would. Now, not as many of you said amen to that, so let's try that again. You obviously didn't understand the question. Would you like to start making good decisions that will bring good results? Say amen. amen. That's better. You know, maybe you're even facing today a crucial decision in your life right now, and you really want to get it right the first time. You can. You can. You don't have to make bad decisions. Then there's another point to, uh, for us to ponder today. Maybe today you're really struggling to know how to handle some drama that's going on in your life. But let's not leave out today that you have a desire to know God and you want to know God and what he wants to do in your life and you really want to do that will of God in your living. So even when you don't know, when you don't know what to do, stop panicking. Stop hitting the panic button today because you're not alone and you're not on your own. If God said, I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you, you can count on that. He's a God who is a friend that will stick closer than a brother. We have that promise, don't we? So there's a God in heaven. Think about this God for a moment. As uh, Chris Tomlin just sung about the greatness of God, how great is our God. This God created the universe. He did all of that. He just spoke it. And the only thing he used his hands on was to form us. And you know, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, David said. If God did all of that, now you think that's good? This same God wants to be involved in every step of your life that it will bring blessings. You don't have to go through life and say, Man, it's just, you know, I, I'm always on the, at the end of the line. I'm always down and out. I'm always just trying to get by. You know why you're that way? It's because you've chosen that path. You've chosen to live that way. That's not God's way for you today. He wants you to make good decisions today, and he wants to lead you down the right paths. Yeah, it's going to cost you some time and some effort and some energy. It's going to cost you some focus. But I tell you, when you focus on God, the benefits are beyond belief. That's why Jesus says, yeah, the thief comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But I've come that you can have life and have it, what? More abundantly. Amen. So from the book of Proverbs today, we know there's a time in Solomon's life that seemingly everything he touched turned to gold. You said, man, I sure wish I could have that kind of life. Well, if you will employ some of God's word in your life, it will. Things will change. And I'm not talking about naming and claiming stuff today. So don't leave here today saying, oh, we're going to get into prosperity theology. I just name it and claim it and I got it. Nope, I didn't say that. Listen to the rest of the message today. Every decision that you make, every decision that Solomon made, was the best decision. Every path that he took, it was the right path. 
Every door that he opened was the right door. And you're saying, boy, that's the kind of life I want. Well, at the very peak of his life, this is what he wrote in Proverbs 16 and 9. This is what we're using as that text, which is chock full. This one little phrase has a wealth or a plethora of information for you. A man's heart deviseth, deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Amen. Now, the God that gave you life wants to guide you in this life. The breath that you've got in your body, God gave it to you. You are created and made by God for his glory. So the God that loves you is the same God that wants to lead you today. But you've got to learn to cooperate with God's plan that he has for your life. The God who sent his son for you today wants to give you his wisdom, which he has a, an abundance of, that really will direct your path and bring you into the blessings of God. Why is every decision important? Every decision that you make is important because every decision brings about results, right? And it's either going to bring about one, good results, or it's going to bring about two, bad results. So because where you are today is the result of decisions that you made yesterday. You know, every choice that you make will affect your tomorrow. The decisions that you made, you made a decision yesterday or this morning, I'm getting up and going to church. Good decision. Because you know what? One, you have obeyed God's word. So by obeying God's word, God's going to bring a blessing to you. And you're here and you can learn from what you're going to hear today in your spirit. So here's some good news for you today. God wants to help you to basically get from your current circumstances to an to a even greater place that is found only in him. So you may think today, and you may be sitting, I don't know what circumstances you've got going on in your life. I don't know what challenges you're facing. I don't know what things are overwhelming you. I just I do know this, we're human and we all have them. But I also know today there's a God that doesn't want you to camp out in that stuff and basically make your home in that. He wants you today to come to a better place. What is um, 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Listen to this. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Now, that being the case, that means God's got better things for you than where you're at in life. So today, I've got three challenges today that uh, I pray that will help you in 2019 in this new year that God has provided for us. Number one today, you've got to admit you need God's guidance. <laughs> you've got to come to the reality today, you do not know everything. Amen? Amen. So back to Proverbs 16, 9. A man's heart deviseth his way. So there's one thing we all have in common. <sighs> Listen to this one. I'm going to hit you right between the eyes. Nobody likes to be told what to do. How many of you husbands love your wife when she gives you the honeydew list? I'm going to preach online at 11 o'clock. Because that answer and that hand was raised was probably the biggest lie they've ever told. Nobody likes to be told what to do. Amen. We want to make our own choices. We want to make our own decisions. We, we like the D.I. Why way? You know what DIY is, right? Do it your way. So honestly, we do not like to admit it. And, uh, and when we don't know what to do, we don't like to admit, <laughs> I'm in a state of not Virginia, but in the state of confusion. Amen. So when it comes to decisions, we need to come before God and say, Lord, I don't know what to do. I need your help. You know what? Honestly, speaking for myself, I face that every day. I'm faced with decisions every day, and some of those decisions that I'm faced with, I just don't know what to do. So I just don't go jump off the cliff without a parachute. You know, I pray about it, and I seek God's guidance. So how do you know what to do? God gives the peace. He really will. Psalm 25 and verse 9 says, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. So we think, well, meekness is weakness, isn't it? No, actually it's strength. 
It's the opposite. So you can walk out of this church today and you can ignore what I'm telling you this morning. And you can say, well, he's just on another soapbox about something else. Now I don't get on soapboxes. I'm just telling you what will help you. And so you can ignore and say to yourself, I'm going to go it alone and make my own decisions. And God will say, well, fine, go ahead. But I'll still be here when you've messed up. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad that he does because, you know what? I'm at the front of the line. I've messed up a whole lot of times. How about you? Aren't y'all? Y'all got to get humble on this thing. I'm telling you right now. Don't sit there all proud thinking you never made a bad decision because you're not that good. You're not all that in a bag of chips. I'm going to tell you right now. Amen. You're not the best thing since white sliced bread, peanut butter, and bananas. Amen. So, <laughs> it would be mighty good. But... Uh, if that's your attitude today, to think you can get it on your own alone, then you will spend most of your time confessing up what you've messed up. <laughs> Amen. You'll, you'll spend more time confessing up what you've messed up. You're better off asking the Lord to guide your steps than you are to always run, running behind your life trying to correct your mistakes. Again, the good news is God wants to to guide you, and God wants you to know here's a vital part of decision-making because you can't make good decisions if you're not in the will of God. So you've got to then involve the will of God in your life. God doesn't want you to be uh, in a position that you're making bad decisions. He wants you to make good decisions, and he wants you to make not only good decisions, but I'm going to take that another step on the rung of the ladder God wants you to make today the best decisions so let's strike that God wants you to make good decisions push that one out God wants you to make best decisions that will be better for your life so God's plan God's will for your life is not a guessing game it's not a dart board it's not pin a tail pin the tail on the donkey or it's not thinking well I'll get up and see what my Horror scope reads this morning, and that's a horror, H O R R O R. That's a horror scope. If you're depending on that, why are you depending on that? Then that's just a bunch of baloney from the devil when you got the real true word of God that will tell you how you can live your life and be blessed beyond measure. Amen. What are you going to choose today? Forget the Lynchburg News and Daily Advance. I'm going to take the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to take how I fell this morning. I'm not going to take today, oh, what day is it? Oh, this is my lucky day. There's no such thing. Where do you come up with all that junk at? There's no such thing. It's trusting God and putting your faith in him. It's, it's a blessed day. And you know what? I got good news for you. Would you like every day to be a blessed day? I would hope so. It can. But preacher, I still face struggles. Yeah, but guess who's in the struggle with you to bring you out with your face? It's God. See, we spend more time in our struggles than really God intends for us to because we won't listen to him. We won't read his word. We won't obey him. We won't seek his guidance. And finally, we think, well, God's my last choice. No, God should have been your first choice. And maybe you could avoid it all those weeks and months and years of struggle that you've been through. So God has a plan. God has a will. You don't have to go through life guessing today. But first, you've got to admit you and I, we need God in our life. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Secondly today, you've got to ask for God's guidance. So back to Proverbs 16, 9. I'm telling you, the last part says this. But the Lord directeth his steps. Now, the word directeth comes from the Hebrew word mean, uh, that basically the word is establishes, which means to put on the right path. So what Solomon's saying here, the Lord wants to put you on the right path. Some of you have been on the wrong path too long. You need to get on the right path and stay on it. And I'm going to get right with God. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to start putting him first two weeks from now. What's wrong with right now? While you go through every year, I'm going to make my resolutions. And I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to be more faithful. I'm going to be in church. I'm going to read the Bible. And it doesn't last two weeks. That lasts two days. You don't have to do that. Just resolve in your spirit today that you want God to establish or you want him to put you on the right path. And you know what? When God puts you on the right path, you'll stay on the right path. Amen. So here's the good news. 
The God who runs the universe, and by the way, I talked to him this morning, and he's still in charge, and he's still in control. He's still sovereign. Says, I'm not too busy for you. I want to guard and guide your steps. If God's availing himself to you today for that, and we're not choosing it, well then, who's the dumb one? We are. So how does God direct your paths? Well, there are four tools that we have at our fingertips that God will do that. Number one, principle number one, is biblical principles. I like that. Because the Word of God is the primary way that God speaks to us. Well, preacher, I don't read the Bible. God's not speaking to you. And that's exactly why I'm trying to drive you or trying to push you or try to encourage you to read through the Bible this year. Because I guarantee you, if you'll read through the Bible this year, when we get to the end of the year, your life's going to be different. And in a positive way, amen. So God, his primary way of speaking to us is through the word of God. The Bible is more than just a good book. The Bible is the guide book. It will guide you, guard you, and it's a book full of the grace of God. So the Bible just doesn't tell you how to get to heaven. Let me tell you what the Bible does. It tells you how to live on earth before you get to heaven. Amen. So you can live blessed of the Lord. Here's a key principle for you. Mark this one down. It's in your study guide. God's direction will never contradict God's instruction. God's direction will never contradict God's instruction. Point number two. Principle number two, I should say. Wise people. Proverbs 15 and 22. Without counsel, uh, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counsels, they are established. So the 100 100% foolproof, fail-safe way to guarantee that you will make bad decisions is to get bad advice from bad people. Right? Absolutely. Well, let me ask you a couple questions here. So you're having financial struggles in your life. So do you go to a person who's bankrupted 10 times to get financial advice? I would hope not. Do you go to a person who has gone through eight or ten failed marriages to get marriage advice? I don't think so. If you do, you really need to shake your head and get your marbles back in the right spot. Well, let me ask you this question. Do you go to a person that is 200 pounds overweight to get good health advice? I don't think so. Do you go to a person who never reads God's word, who never comes to church or prays to find out how to get closer to God? <laughs> no, you don't. A good way to get good advice is to seek advice from a person or people today who, is a, who have arrived at the destination that you are desiring to have in your life. You know what I learned a long time ago? You really need to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. Now listen, it's great. You say, well, the Bible says don't put your confidence in man. Exactly. But godly people who are living for the Lord, you can trust their advice and their life because their life proves the will of God in their life. So, you know... Are they achieving today the desires that you have in your life? Are they closer to God? Are they being blessed of the Lord? You need to find out what they're doing to get blessed. And I tell you, really, honestly, it's very simplistic. Here's the key right here. If you get in this, this will get in you. It'll make a difference. That's the word of God, by the way. I didn't bring some, I didn't bring some book up here to read to you today. From I see preachers got books in the pulpit, reading books. To, I didn't come to read no book to you. I've come to tell you the inerrant, infallible, inspired word of God and what it will do in your life if you'll get it in your life. Amen. Praise God. So, too many people are just doing what they think rather than doing what God says. So, just because something seems right absolutely does not make it right. Principle number three. Spiritual prompting. There are a lot of advantages to being a believer. Amen. Here's one. 
If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you have within you a divine GPS system. You know what GPS stands for? Global Positioning System. Well, you got something better than that. You got godly positioning system within you. And that's what the Word of God does for you. It gives you a godly positioning system to position you to where you need to be in your living. You'll find the, the more time that you read God's word, the more time you spend with God. Preacher, I'm just so busy. You better get some of that busy junk out of your life and get what in your life really matters. And that's the presence and the power and the word of God. Amen. The better you recognize his voice when he speaks today. You know, God speaks to, to you today. He, he doesn't speak to you in your ears. He speaks to you in your heart. And if you will listen to him, he'll do a great work. So God's given us two. Here's a good way to look at it. God's given us two guardrails today in life. Here, are, here they are. One today is scripture. If you're not in scripture, then you're missing the whole point. You're not even on the boat. And you're going to be bouncing off the road of life. You need the guardrail of the word of God. The second guardrail is the Spirit of God. You need the Holy Spirit to guard you, guide you, direct your path. So the Bible protects you from thinking what you ought to do, and it will instruct you what God has told you what to do. So the Holy Spirit today will protect you from making, and this is where you get in trouble, making emotional decisions. Don't ever make decisions based on your emotion. Because you know what? You're going to make the wrong decision. Amen. You ever had somebody, you read something, and just, I mean, the, your blood started boiling. You read something somebody posted on that stupid Facebook, and it got you all stirred up, and boy, you got your phone out or your computer out, and you was just, I mean, it was, it was smoking, man. You just had a response already. You were going to just fire both cannons at them. Well, let me just advise you. If you do that, for God's sake, don't send it. After you've got the frustration out of you, delete it. Because you know what? What you throw out there resembles what you are in your character. And Facebook is one of the biggest character-telling devices that we have in social media today. It has told me more about people's character than you can imagine. It tells me who is and who isn't. It tells me who's walking with God and who's not. But be careful what you put out there. Amen. So when, when you have your spiritual antenna up, God will make you know his will that he has for you today. Principle number four. I've got to hurry up and finish here. Inner peace. I like this one because you will know God has spoken to you when you have 100% of God's peace in your life. Here's a key fact for you. Another one of those headliners for you. The will of God will never lead you where the peace of God will not keep you. Amen. So, now, things are going to get a little bit tougher for you. That was kind of simplistic. That was kind of decision-making 101. Now we're going to get into a little bit heavier area. Last thing. Apply God's guidance. The reason why you may not know what God would have you to do is because you're not already doing what you know you should be doing. You're doing that which is contrary to what God wants you to do. So God's not obligated to direct you if you're not going to follow his instructions. It's just like, you know, I have people come to me and say, Preacher, I need to talk to you about this in my life and so forth. And I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you point blank right up front. If you're not going to listen to me, don't waste my time. Amen. I've had people come to me and they've gotten marital problems in their life. I said, listen, let's start right now. I had a couple some years ago and they came and sat down in the front row of the pew there. And I, and, and I could feel the tension. I said, let's just settle this issue right now. Are you here to reconcile your marriage? Or are you here today just to rail at each other and tell me all your problems? Are you here for a solution? Or are you just here to run your mouth? I said, if you're here just to run your mouth, then probably the best thing for you to do is run out the door. Because you're wasting my time. You know what they did? They got up and left. <laughs> and the divorce. You know why? Because they were not interested in solving their problems. They just wanted somebody to listen to them shout at each other at. If you're not willing to listen to what God's going to tell you, don't waste God's time. 
If you're not willing to do what God's going to instruct you, don't waste God's time. If, if, if you really are serious about life change in your life, then do what God tells you to do, right? Amen. So the real problem is not that they can't find God's will for uh, a situation, but they are not doing what they already know they should be doing now. If you know what you're doing is wrong and you keep on doing it, hello, is your wood wet? I mean, really? So the question is, are you following God's will in every area of your life? I can't do it. Who told you that? You can. Have you read Philippians 4, 13? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You will not only know what to do, but when you don't know what to do, if you're already doing what you know to do. You think about that one. I think I put that in your study guide for you to read and think about you will not only know God's will for tomorrow if you are doing God's will for today. Amen. So God is not the problem. We are. God gets blamed for a lot of stuff that we decide rather than trusting and serving him. So if you're, hear me, here's a couple of things about the God's guidance. If you're robbing God financially today, and you're going to get this, so you might as well buckle your seatbelt and get, get ready for the ride. If you're robbing God financially today, if you're living in sexual sin, if you are neglecting God's word, then why would you even expect God to guide you? I mean, if you're choosing to do that which is contrary to God's will, why should God bless you? Well, I'm going to get in on your blessing. No, you're not. <laughs> you're responsible for how you live your life. And if you're not living it to the glory of God, you're living it wrong. Boy, this is tough stuff, isn't it? I got y'all thinking this morning. I can see the smoke coming out your ears. Amen. Amen. You will never the, know, uh, you'll never know the unknown will of God for your life until you're doing the known will of God for your life. So you've got to get in God's will. You're, you're telling God you need his help for tomorrow, but honestly, you need his help for today. In closing, and you say it. <laughs> I thought you would. If you're not a believer in Christ... I know one decision that God wants you to make today. And it's found in 2 Timothy 2 and 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth is knowing Christ is your personal Savior. So God wants to give you, he wants to give you a heart and he wants to give you a life. He wants us today to surrender those things to him so that he can guide your heart and your life today, tomorrow, and in the days ahead today. Thank God. I'm glad I got to think about this a minute. And you better say amen to it. I'm going to go back and reteach all of it. <laughs> you better thank God that you've got a God that cares enough to want to be involved in your life to bless you. Amen. Now stop being a knucklehead. And doing that which is contrary to his will. And start doing that which honors his will. And if you'll start making the right. I've given you a decision guide this morning. Now you're going to make a decision. You're going to say well. Okay that sounds good. Alright. But I'm not going to do it. Okay. Well I'm going to tell you the decision you just made. You just say it to God. I don't want your blessing. I don't want your will. I don't want your guidance. So when you're in the mess that your life is directed towards and you're going to wind up in, tell me this, what are you going to do then? I'm going to call on God. Why don't you call on him today so you, you can avoid all that tomorrow? Amen. Amen. I close with this, with a hallelujah. You can be guided by the, by the God who knows tomorrow already. Amen. Amen. Hey, all he wants you to do is to yield and to follow his will. Father, thank you today. We've had a good time in your word. And Lord, we've found great insight, great information. We've found great inspiration that will change us in our thinking and in our walk. 
I pray today that we will embrace this and, and employ this and use this and make our lives more dedicated to the glory of God. We love you, Lord, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and spirit. We pray your hand of direction. I pray today that this was going to be, as it already has began, a great day in this church and its people. I just pray for your leadership. I pray for the salvation of the lost. I pray for the blessings. I pray for the healing of the sick. I pray for the encouragement of those who are discouraged. I pray for the uplifting for those who are down. I just pray for the blessing that we will follow the will of God and we can say praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. We'll say this and give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name and all God's servants say it. Amen. Amen. Well, go on and give the Lord a praise.